This video is going to be all about your fat soluble vitamins. Those are your vitamin A, D, E, and K, or ADEC. And fat soluble vitamins aren't readily peed out, just stored more in your fat and in your liver. Because of that, overdose is more common. We'll start with vitamin A. So vitamin A is found in things like carrots and has a ton of different functions. Seen in your eyes, in your rods and cones. So needed for vision, rods, cones, helps cells differentiate. So cell differentiate. And that is how it can help in acne and also, very importantly, leukemia. We'll talk about that more in our heme block, but no, vitamin A is good for acne and a certain type of leukemia. Another thing, it's important for growth, especially in a fetus. It uh, interacts with genes that help grow the fetus. That is why vitamin A can be teratogenic. And too much vitamin A causing teratogenic side effects isn't common through your diet, but it is common through things like drugs, things like treatment of acne, Accutane which is a form, which is a trade name for a form of vitamin A. So they might ask, and I've seen this asked on the step, um, patient wants to get treatment for their acne, what should they do? Well, you would get a pregnancy test first, and then you would put a patient on um, a birth control. That way they won't get pregnant, won't get those teratogenic effects because they can be devastating. So birth control, and a preg test. While we're talking on overdoses of vitamin A, if you have too much vitamin A, another thing it can cause is cranial edema. So again, taking this acne patient, I've seen another question talking about the same, uh, I guess a young teenager with cystic acne, they're taking a medicine. And then all of a sudden they're having headaches, you know, trouble with their eyes or vision. It's because they're overdosed on vitamin A and it's causing cranial edema. Very important, keep that in mind. Deficiencies, very common in the developing world. Night blindness, because again, it's needed for vision. So night blindness. You have these abnormal keratin in your eyes because again, it's needed for cell differentiation. Those are called bit tot spots. So that's vitamin A, cross that off the list, vitamin D. Vitamin D, you probably know it as um, found in your milk or going outside and getting it from the sunlight. Milk or sun, where it isn't found is in breast milk and that is important for you to know okay that's important for you to know it's also important for you to educate mothers to know it's not found in your breast milk so not found in your breast milk that because of that you want to send your kid out have some activities out in the sun get that vitamin d or you can give them milk with vitamin d in it if you're lacking that, if you're not getting enough sun, if you're not getting vitamin, enough vitamin D in your diet, you can have rickets. Or in an adult form, it's called osteomalacia. Because this is biochem, we need to talk about the biochem pathway of vitamin D. It is very important and very commonly tested. I actually got a question about that on my exam. You start by making a preform of vitamin D. So preform in your skin as 7-D-hydroxy-cholesterol. And you go outside and the UV lights from the sun 
hits that and it becomes Kali calciferol. We're still not at active vitamin D. We're still almost there. This is just a different form. This is also the form that is seen when you drink milk. Not breast milk, just regular milk. So we're still not active vitamin D. We need a few more steps. And the next step will be in your liver via something called 2,5-hydroxylase. Judging by the name, it turns into 2,5-OHD. And the last and final step is in your kidneys via an enzyme called 1-alpha-hydroxylase. And that 1-alpha-hydroxylase, the name gives it away, turns it into 1-2-5-OH-D2. Okay? And 1-2-5 is the active form. That's where it can do what vitamin D does. Vitamin D increases your gut and your renal uptake of things like calcium and phosphate help build bones. So that is vitamin D. Cross that off. Now on the vitamin E. Vitamin E, I say it's called E because it does everything. Vitamin E is an antioxidant. So it stops free radicals. It is also an anti-coagulant. Stops vitamin K, which we'll talk about in a second, from making clotting factors. So it actually enhances drugs like warfarin, can increase bleeding. Deficiencies in it can cause radical damage to red blood cells and hemolytic anemia. But probably the most important and the most commonly tested is deficiencies in vitamin E can cause neuro signs. So they talk about a patient who might not be all there with their nutrition, whether they're, you know, homeless or alcoholic or not just getting the nutrition they need. They might even talk about a patient that had surgery, you know, resection of the bowel, et cetera. And they're showing signs of neuroscience. Most people immediately think of B12. And that's why they like this question so much because they want you to think outside of the box. They'll have those neuroscience, have that sign of their missing nutrition, but they'll say that their methyl malonic acid is normal. You don't see that in B12 deficiency. They'll also say they don't have megaloblastic anemia. Again, you don't see that in B12 deficiency. So it must be vitamin E deficiency. Very important you remember that. Very important you don't get into confined into a box into a one track mind where you're just constantly thinking vitamin b deficiency even though all the signs are pointing elsewhere remember vitamin e okay that does it for vitamin e vitamin k is the last one vitamin k is very famous vitamin k helps make clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. It also makes protein C and S. You need to know those also. You might have a deficiency in it early on because it's not found in breast milk. Now I erased the board. Do you remember what other vitamin that we talked about isn't found in breast milk? Vitamin D. Good. So it's not found in breast milk. Not in breast milk. So if a baby doesn't, it's also, but it is found and it is made by gut bacteria. Now here's the problem. Babies don't have a lot of gut bacteria and if they're only drinking breast milk, then they can be vitamin 
K deficient. And because they're vitamin K deficient, they can have bleeding. They're not making those clotting factors. Bleeding if deficient. That is vitamin K in a big, general, broad scope. However, because this is biochem, we want to know exactly how vitamin K makes those clotting factors. So you get what we call residues of the two, seven, nine, ten factors. Two, seven, nine, ten. And that gets worked on by gamma carboxylase to make what you need to make, active two, seven, nine, ten. Well, you obviously need vitamin K to get in here. And it gets in here as reduced vitamin K, lends a helping hand, and becomes oxidized vitamin K. Sometimes just known as epoxide. Vitamin K is a valuable commodity, so we want to recycle that. And the thing that does that is epoxide reductase, or just vitamin K reductase. That's the thing that warfarin blocks. Okay? And that is how we make our two, seven, nine, ten clotting factors via vitamin K. That does it for this video. See you next time.